A charming thief and a band of unlikely adventurers undertake an epic heist to retrieve a lost relic. But things go dangerously awry when they run afoul of the wrong people. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves brings the rich world and playful spirit of the legendary role-playing game to the big screen. The film had a huge opening last night at the Paramount Theater. And with us in the studio today are the film's writers and directors, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein. Welcome to South by Southwest Studio. Congrats, the premiere was off the hook last night. Franz, our writer, went inside. He doesn't like D&D, &D, and he was like, I laughed throughout. There was lines around the theater. It was packed. The D&D &D nerds love the little goose eggs you put in there. You guys are right in the high. How you all feel? Feeling really good right now. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, we love South By under any circumstances. We love the crowd that you get here, and the response to the movie couldn't have been better. We were so excited. And the, the Twitters, the Twitters have spoken. Mm -hmm. Is that what they and, call it? The Twitters have spoken, yeah. and on the hashtag, the reluctant critics were like, this was really good. <laughs> so when you guys hear they were like, oh, the bar was low. We, we, yeah. we did it. That, that's, our, that's our safe space is, is a low bar. Because the low there's, bar. A, there's only yeah. up from there. So no, we're, we're really happy people dug it. And uh, you know, it, we, we understood the sort of challenge of, of a movie like this and how to kind of overcome the preconceived notions. All right, so there is a challenge. Now, I'm not a D&D &D player. However, I have to be the ambassador of the D&D community, all right? And the D&D community is very skeptical mm -hmm. because there was a movie that came out in 2000, Dungeons and Dragons. And I, I think, heard, safe yeah. to say, 20 years out, it was not good. <laughs> and now they see their beloved property in the hands of John and Jonathan. Sirs, knights, squires, <laughs> flex your D&D muscles. Prove that you are the right helmers of this vehicle. Well, I'll just say I played the first edition back in 1942. Mm. Um, <laughs> you don't look a day above 76. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, my brother was a dungeon master, my older brother. Oh. And um, he was not very nice to me, and he would kill me <laughs> off. But I still loved the game. And, uh, and it kind of inspired me, because back then, games came in boxes. Right. And there were boards, and you just played what they told you to play. But D&D allowed so much freedom, and, and you had to kind of create it as you went along. And I think that's probably part of what led me to being a filmmaker. Yeah. And you get the last word, you, you, your dungeon master brother, you're like, now what? Yeah, yeah. What is your, and this is another D&D question. Please. Your most legendary move, your le most legendary D&D experience that to this day you can flex with? I mean, I was a half-elf paladin in my last campaign, level six, so pretty badass. <laughs> um, and I would always kind of rely on the divine radiance. And Zenk, our character played by Reggie Jean Page in the film, utilizes that as well when his, his sword glows up. But he's, uh, you know, paladins are the best because they're just better than any other uh, playable character. And um, it's a bold statement, I sir. like to be better than everyone, so. Yeah, you, all, you both said, look, well done. Nerd, nerd credentials, just bonafide, <laughs> polished. You said you want to capture the spirit of the game yeah. in this movie. How did you capture that spirit? Well, I think that In a the, big budget, yeah, yeah. big right. budget movie right, right, with a right. great cast, CGI. Um, I think up till now the fantasy genre has been considered as something that has to be taken deadly seriously. It's all kind of gloomy and there's people dying right and left and not a lot of laughs. And we knew that there's another side to D&D. It's embodied in the game of, of Dungeons and Dragons, but we hadn't seen it on screen yet. So that's what we set out to do. And the, the way to do D&D and the reason why people love it is it's a community. Mm -hmm. It's friends coming together, board game, old school, right? Moves. And you had to convince a crew, an ensemble, to invest in this property. And you guys got, like, you got some actors here. You got yeah. Hugh Grant, Chris Pine, you got Michelle Rodriguez. How, when you approach them, you're like, listen, Dungeons and Dragons, Hugh Grant. <laughs> we have a role for you. What was the response? How'd you pitch it to them? Well, look, I think, again, that the title alone might dissuade them from uh, uh, tackling a project like this just because of those preconceived notions and low bars and hurdles. But I think right now, D&D is having such a resurgence. And, and the script was, uh, first and foremost, our priority to get right when we were, when we were yeah. first devising the film. And so it was something that we spent a lot of time on, making sure that each of the characters had something to say that they were unique in their own right and they also had an arc and I think that's probably what attracted our cast they 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 seem to really enjoy the script yeah speaking about scripts you you, have, you all have a reputation you said in the town 
you get scripts which, quote, have a stink on them, <laughs> right? And yeah. The low bars. That's and right. they're like, John and Jonathan, this is a crappy script. Make it better. <laughs> right. uh, and so it's one of those things where you've developed a reputation, but you take these scripts, you polish it off, and you produce gems, right? What is it about, I think, the, the, the combo of both of you that people say, these guys will take this crappy, stinky thing and make it, <laughs> make it aromatic and fragrant. That's right. To be fair, the original script of Dungeons and Dragons was not crappy. It was just different, and we wanted. I like to that. It was very diplomatic, sir. But there was baggage, like you said. There was baggage around the title and trying to turn it into a movie that could garner respect in the world. And the old um, movie, which had actors, the Jeremy movie. Irons was in it, right? Mm -hmm, had, that's yeah, right. Marlon Wayans had a big budget and just. Yeah. You no, know, he takes more than money and good actors. Um, I think. You know, what our thing is when we approach any piece of material is trying to figure out what haven't we seen before, what hasn't the audience seen before. How do you take something that feels a little on the nose, a little cliched, and give it a spin and do it in a way that feels fresh? That's how we approach this movie. There's a lot of fresh things in here, and in particular, Chris Pine, uh, as your traditional leading male, is not the traditional leading male, right? He's not the action hero. He doesn't even do most of the fighting. What was it about debunking that archetype that brought Chris on and what you deliberately did with this particular movie? Well, I think the thing that's so great about Chris is his versatility and the fact that he's able to tackle a character that is less than perfect. Um, I wouldn't call the character weak in any way, but I would say that you know he has a lot of baggage that he has to overcome over the course of the film, mm. and he is willing to make himself look vulnerable and have flaws that he has to kind of contend with over the course of the film. So, And ultimately, in the end, he is the hero, becomes the hero that he was meant to be. We just think it's interesting and fun and mm. different for a change to see the woman be the physical lead. Yes, the woke virus has in, infected you and in this. <laughs> no, there's no woke virus. But specific, specific, uh, about that, you know, the women are the ones literally kicking butt in this movie. They're yeah. the ones fighting. And you said that was not a decision made by wokeness, but that was nonetheless a decision that you made for well, this particular movie. Yeah, I mean, I think we really wanted to sort of deviate from the traditional norms of these films because, frankly, there are a lot of these films that are garbage, you know, and I think it's great to be able to find other ways into the story that haven't necessarily been seen before. That said, we've got Reggae Jean Page kicking butt, so that totally debunks whatever the, the internet narrative is. Trolls. Is. Calm yeah. down. You have men <laughs> kicking right. butt. All right. And also, <laughs> Edgen kicks a ton of ass, too, just not necessarily in the traditional ways that you're used to. The, you know, the, <laughs> the movie sets itself up for potential sequels, some would sure. say a franchise. Uh, if this does well, and it seems like it will, you were telling me it has a hundred as of right now. Knock oh, on geez. not wood on Rotten Tomatoes, and if you're crushing it on, if you're, if you're doing well on Twitter and Rotten Tomatoes, then you've got then the I mean, world. you got it. You got, got the, the world. world. Uh, do you have What's sequels mapped out? You have, we you do have a not. Trilogy? No, we do not. Our, our producer Jeremy Latcham likes to say, and he worked at Marvel for many years. Um, Make one good movie. That mm -hmm. was always the approach that we took to this. Um, if we're lucky enough that people go and see it and they want to see another one, we'd love to dive back in, but that is never, it's not like we planted seeds. Exactly. The biggest mistake I think that so many studios have made after the success of the Marvel movies is to try to create a cinematic universe before a good first movie even comes out. Hmm. I, uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm not naming names. Huh. All I'm saying is, look, it, that, that is one approach and it feels a little over ambitious ambitious considering you need to have the, the the goods to back it up and that's kind of what we were doing with this it's not in any way uh, uh, the first of many in our minds it is a movie that should stand alone singularly and if we have the fortune of being able to do more great quick segue because you mentioned it you you all were working on flash coming out in DC uh, big movie have you all seen it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah all right your verdict of the flash that's coming out. I think it's terrific. It's a ton honestly. of fun. Um, no, we have plenty of reasons not to like it. We love it. Because you worked, you spent a lot of time on <laughs> we it. Did. We did. You used polish up that script, you had an idea, you pitched it to the stars, and they said, eh, we're gonna go in a different direction. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, we ended up with a story by writing credit on it, and a lot of the DNA of what we started with is, is still there. They just ran in a direction that works, and it's emotional and fun, and we really enjoyed ah, it. Ah, so really you, you got, you got the validation with it. All right, I want, I want to do the origin story here. Sure. Um, you're an actor, you're yeah. on Freaks and Geeks, writer, director, Gina Davis. How mm -hmm. did Gina Davis bring together these two <laughs> nerds? 
Uh, you know, D Gina Davis is an archer, and she she was able to kind of connect us with a single well arrow. Well played, well played. <laughs> Cupid's arrow. That's nice. That's right. <laughs> also uh, an actor, is and also uh, doing fantastic work for women. But yeah, she. Gina Davis, Academy Award winning actress, just took up archery. And That's right. And once we were able yeah. to dislodge the arrow and go to the hospital, uh, we, we have been connected ever since. No, I, I was an actor on the show. Jonathan was a staff writer. And we both. The Gina Davis show. The Gina Davis show. I'm sure everyone's heard of it. Not the one where she played um, the president. No, no that's commander in chief. No. Um, but it was up against Dharma and Greg, or a lead into Dharma, I don't even remember. Anyway, the thing is, is he was the writer potential. on it. It had so much potential. <laughs> um, but it did in the sense that it brought us together, and, and we wrote, we started writing together after that, and, and found a real, uh, a real connection in our sensibilities, mm. and have been doing it ever since. It, did you just know right then, you're like, we're going to be working together? Because you, you were an actor at that time. Yeah. 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 Well, we wrote, the first thing we wrote was a TV pilot that John could have starred in if we had sold it, which we didn't. But um, it was, you know, writing movies is an endurance test in a lot yeah. of ways. And to have somebody else to do that with just makes it so much more fun um, and, and it, it just a better experience. Uh, final question for you. You didn't get The Flash, but... Dungeons and Dragons, doing really well, gonna do really well. People are saying it's, it's, a, it's a great movie. If you can do a superhero movie next, which one? Oh, gosh. You can look in the camera. That's your camera right there. Marvel's watching, DC's watching. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I like Biz <laughs> Bizarro Superman. Really hasn't, oh! gotten, hasn't gotten his day in the sun yet. There you go. Bizarro, no respect does. Enjoy, yes. Uh, thank you so much all, congrats. Appreciate it. The movie is fantastic, people are loving it. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. Actually, I just got told I have two more minutes. So they oh told me around I'm going to use those two it's minutes. Fantastic. Never, I take we're it back. Already, I take it hands. back. No, no, we're we got to take it back. Again. Reverse flash. We got to take it back. All right. Um, with this particular uh, movie that you have, Dungeons and Dragons, for those who are skeptical, yeah. for those who are skeptical about dragons, science sure. fiction, sure. fantasy, all of it, go see this movie. Convince them. Yeah, well, I think the thing about this film is that it is not cynical. I think the, the, the thing that I'm allergic to that I s tend to see a lot in big budget movies of this type is that there is a certain cynicism uh, uh, surrounding it with the quips. There, it, it doesn't seem to take itself seriously. And I think, you know, while we have a lot of jokes and humor in it, the, the, the core of this movie is the heart. And, mm. and we, we came from a very earnest place when we were crafting this thing. It wasn't, it wasn't an attempt to be super meta or, you know, you know make fun of itself. But uh, that, I think, that, that heart, is something that you don't necessarily find very often. And the, and the relatability, even though it's yeah. this very foreign, ancient world you're looking at, similar to when we, how we approached Spider-Man Homecoming, um, that was essentially a coming-of-age movie about yeah. like a grounded, relatable kid who gets mm -hmm. superpowers. And, um, and this is a movie about a group of misfits who uh, find themselves on this adventure together with big stakes. And um, I don't think you need to know anything about the game or the world or even be a fantasy lover. It's don't have to be a dungeon master. Don't be. Ha don't have to be an elf or a troll. Just oh, no. like. Just have to enjoy good storytelling. And like mm -hmm. I said, Franz, our writer, not a fan of D and D at all. Saw the premiere yesterday. Had a great time. Said there was heart, laughter, sincerity. Can we sincerity. get Franz in here? Franz. Can we bring him in. Franz. He's. A, can you come in and give a review? Nah. <laughs> he gave a thumbs up from the side. All right. Uh, but congrats for real this Just time. Another one. There we go. What if we had another two minutes? We're done. What's We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons will be in theaters everywhere beginning March 31st. Go and see it. Franz approved. I'm your host, Wajahat Ali. We've got a great lineup of interviews in store for you today. Kerry Washington, Delroy Lindo, and the cast and creator of Unprisoned are coming up next at 11.30. Deepak Chopra will be here at 2.30. And Bob Odenkirk, Miria Enos, and the Lucky Hank team will be here at 3. Our studio interviews are live streaming during the conference on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SXSW. Please stay tuned for much, much more.